Shabbat Shalom, everybody. It's uh, Rabbi Stephen, Rab Shmuel ben Yehoshua. Yes, Rashbi in the house. So this week we have a service that we're doing on Friday night, Friday evening, and we will have uh, we'll start we'll have a luck at six as usual. And this week we're going to do dairy. Okay, we're uh, we're going to be making fish. So you know, bring uh, when you bring a side dish, potluck. Bring feel free to bring something dairy uh, that or either a dessert. We'll start services uh, 7 p.m. Jewish Standard Time. We all know what that means. And then we'll kind of schmooze and talk, have dessert and uh, whatever afterwards. So uh, looking forward to seeing you there. Please let us know. You know, you can always go on my website uh, as someone did. Someone finally did. They made a reservation on the website. Uh, you can do that as well. Let us know. So looking forward to seeing you. And of course, we love love having you. There'll be music and, and uh, participation and it'll be fun. It'll be fun and it'll be inspirational. That's the important thing. So, this week, Vayechi, and he lived, closes out the book of Genesis, and he lived. Jacob, it talks about Jacob, but also, in a sense, it's also about Joseph. And this portion brings to a close Genesis. Now, when I say Genesis, I don't just mean the book. I mean the beginning. So, this book in Hebrew is called Bereshit in the beginning, which is also, of course, the name of the first portion of the Torah of, which is the first part of the uh, uh, Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, uh, in the beginning, Bereshit. And as we all know, the portions get their names usually from one of the first words, usually a key word in, the, uh, in that particular portion that starts either the first or the second verse. And, you know, it it's kind of sets the stage for what the portion is, but it also kind of tells you where you are in the Torah, right? Because there's no Nikud marks, no no vowels, no punctuation, no grammar. Uh, it's not like the Chumash, which is nice con nice and conveniently laid out. You know, aliyot, portions, chapters, etc., etc. So, let's look at that word Bereshi. B in Reshit, the beginning. Now, Reshi, Rishon, the first uh, or Rosh, the head, and ancient Hebrew is a real conceptual language. You see, words refer really more to ideas rather than specific things, the way our society uses language. So, Reshit, it means the beginning, means the head, means the, uh, the first uh, Rishon. Now, it is, what is it the beginning of? It's the beginning, of course, you say, well, duh, it's the beginning of, of the world as we know it. It's the beginning of the human race, homo sapiens sapien, you know, intelligent men. It's kind of the way we, we kind of look at it. Um, but it's also really the beginning of Judaism. It's the beginning of this idea we call monotheism. Now, the Zohar, which is one of the main books of Kabbalah, you know, they, they, they call it Jewish mysticism, but in its essence, Kabbalah really looks at the deeper meanings of, of the Torah, and for that, it looks at the insights, you know, into this ineffable, this unknowing, unknowable being, being with a capital B, that we call Hashem, or God, you know, because we don't know him. In Kabbalah, uh, Hashem is, is Ein Sof, outside of our perception. I was saying, up until the time I read the Zohar, that God is merely a, a spiritual being, but according to the Zohar, Ein Sof, not even a spiritual being, just out there. It's something beyond our comprehension. So what the Zohar, what Kabbalah does is it looks at these words and breaks them down. So in the first first chapter of the Zohar, when it talks about it, and the Zohar follows the uh, the cadence and, and, and the flow of the Torah, Bereshit, it takes the word Bereshit and divides it into two words, bara she, Bara, which means he created, she. And the Kabbalists take a little bit of license with that word because they say sheet really sounds like sheish, which is six. The taf, and the way we use it in modern Hebrew, okay, in Ashkenazic, you've got two. You've got a taf, which is the, 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 the letter with a dagish. That's that little dot in there. That's a tu. And then when you take the dagish out in Ashkenazi, it's a su sounds. It's a sav. In Sephardic, of course, it's both, it's both a tav. And modern Hebrew has adopted the Sephardic pronunciations as the main language. So in a way, it's kind of a soft T, kind of like a th, as opposed to what you might say the tet, as in tov is. It's a harder t as opposed to a th, you know, almost like a th. So it kind of sounds like it's between a t and a s, and that's how we can get away with saying bara created sheish, created six. So in also in modern, uh, in ancient Hebrew, just a quick note, Bara, Bereshit Elohim, 
and created God, okay? Elohim uh, in, in ancient Hebrew. A lot of times the verb is the main thrust of the idea of the sentence or the verse, and uh, the noun typically comes afterwards. And we know this uh, too. In Hebrew also, the noun uh, always comes before the adjective. So we say good dog. In Hebrew, we'd say kalev tov, you know, dog good. So Barashi created six. And what, did this, what are the six that Hashem created? Well, he created the days, the day, the six days of creation. There's your first clue. But let's look at the whole book of Barashi, the whole book of the Torah Barashi created six. Think about this. What else, of what other six things did God create? Okay, think about this. Adam and Eve, Noah, Abraham, and Sarah, let's be fair, Isaac and Rebekah, Jacob, and Leah, Rachel, and of course, Bilhah and Zilpah, and Joseph. Think about it. Those are the six key figures of the book of Genesis or, or Bereshit that developed this concept that we now call Judaism. So not only were there six days of creation, but there were six people, six groups, if you will, that created this monotheism uh, of, of knowing, of conceiving, of understanding, of relating to the one creator. So Genesis ends that. Okay, now we call the Torah the five books of Moses. And yes, there's five books, but are they really of Moses? Well, the first book, Genesis, Moses isn't even mentioned, not even an idea. Other than when God tells Abraham that, you know, your people will be in exile for a number of years and then they'll come back to the Holy Land. And that's kind of sets up the stage for Moses to be born in the book of, of, of Exodus or in the Hebrew Shemot, names. So another key point, and then we're going to go to another concept, is that they say 70 souls went down to Egypt, went down. That's that's kind of a play on the meaning too, because they went from this uh, lofty spirituality, you know, that we call Judaism of the monotheism to Egypt, which was really kind of pagan, right? So they went down in a way, went down, they took a step that back spiritually. So in a way, it was a good thing that uh, the Israelites were kind of had their own uh, uh, community in Goshen, which is, you know, they, they've identified with the uh, area of Ramses too in modern time. So they say 70 went down. Then in the Eitzchayim Chumash, that's something that I'm reading this year, taking a break from the Art Scroll Chumash and the Sancino edited by the great Rabbi, uh, Rabbi Hertz, they say that they, they take account and they say there were 67, 67 people that they count. And they say, well, you know, 70, it's, uh, it's, a, it's seven by 10, divisible of seven. Seven's a number of completion like Shabbat. So they use that as a group. But think about this. Are those the only people that went down to Egypt? All right, we have 67 people and we have Joseph, 68, Ephraim, 69, and Manasseh, there's your 70, right? Okay, so, and it names that in, in Exodus. So there were 70 people. Okay, so couple of minutes remaining, but I wanted to discuss that because, you know, each year I like to do something a little different, you know, otherwise what's the point in, in doing this? And, and the Torah has so much in it. It takes years to study it, right? So like interesting to look at different aspects of it. So here we have Vaichi jo uh, Jacob. Jacob knows he's dying and he summons, first of all, Joseph, who's his son that led them into Egypt and into this uh, life of prosperity while they were facing famine in Canaan. And he wants to bless not just Joseph, but also Ephraim and Menashe, the younger before the older, just like Jacob was the younger of Esau and Isaac was the younger of, of uh, Ishmael. Sometimes it's the younger that's really kind of becomes the firstborn in a legacy sense, okay? So he adopts them and puts them on the same form on the same keel on the same level as as he says Reuben and Shimon which were his first two born with Leah okay so now he's got actually 13 or 14 sons now he gives them blessings now of course we know now that you know the 10 tribes have been lost actually it wasn't really 10 it's more like nine yes there are three tribes left and we all know Judah Judaism and the Levites which are the Kohanes and the Levites the ministers of the priests who's this mysterious third tribe that survived the first temple was destroyed, and prior to that, the 10 tribes were lost, right? They were defeated, they were scattered, no more. 
And if you remember, the story of Purim takes place between the first and the second temple, because it's after that that King Cyrus relents and says, okay, go back. So who are the key poor people in the book in the, in the Megillah of Esther? It's Mordecai, who is from the tribe of Benjamin. Yes, remnants of the tribe of Benjamin survived as well. So this blessing of all the tribes, when he says, you know, Judah's the lion wealth, the scepter should not divide, uh, depart from Judah. Benjamin is the wool, is like the wool's fold. Um, Don is, will judge his people, uh, he likes the snakes. So he gives all these characteristics, Shimeon and Levi, you know, cursed be their anger. Not them, their anger. See, modern psychology, modern mental health and mental counseling, 3,500 years ago, there it is. Curse their anger, not them, right? And what is all this? When we read this, what does it matter? There's no tribes available. Think about this. I'm going to ask you to read through those characteristics and think of them in terms of we Jews today. Think of them as our characteristics. Israel could not survive if they were not like the wolf that, you know, bit at the heels or they have anger, right? They got to contain that anger with all these countries coming at them. Uh, Judah's the lion's wealth. The scepter shall not depart from Judah. Israel's like the only democracy in the whole Middle East. And as Jews, we support that. Okay. Okay. That's our time for this week. Shabbat Shalom. And as we say at the end of every book, the warriors cry, Chazak, Chazak, Venith Chazek, strength, strength, may we all be strong.